Today I want to talk a little bit about equilibrium constants for gases. If we have a homogeneous equilibrium, we can talk about them in terms of it and all of the, the reactants, products, or gases. Then we can talk about them in terms of their concentration, as you've seen in other videos. So that would be the equilibrium constant K sub C, dealing with concentrations. But we can also talk about their partial pressures. And, and really, it could be heterogeneous equilibria also. Um, anything involving gases as reactants or products, we can talk about with respect to their partial pressures. Um, and we can do that with uh, another version of the equilibrium constant. So I want to talk a little bit about that today. So uh, if you stress a system in equilibrium by changing the pressure, then the number of moles on each side of the reaction of the gas are going to be important. So when we're talking about number of moles here, we're talking about the number of moles of gases. Because gases spread out, they take up a lot of space. They are compressible and expandable, and that's kind of part of what they are. And so if I'm giving them less space to move around in, right, if I'm decreasing the volume, that's going to increase the pressure. That's Boyle's law, right? So that's that. Um, inverse relationship between volume and pressure of a gas. And so the reaction then is going to shift to compensate for that stress if I'm decreasing the volume or increasing the pressure, however I'm doing it. Um, that will shift things to decrease the stress towards the side of the reaction with fewer moles of gas. So I need to be aware then when I have a reaction of how many moles of gas I have on each side. And so I'm going to look then at how that changes and how a change in pressure would potentially impact that. So let's think about this kind of conceptually. If I have whatever molecule X or uh, element X here that's in its solid form, and let's say uh, we're looking at the equilibrium here for its sublimation. So I'm going from a solid to a gas. In my piston setup here, so I have this kind of movable piston that I can my kind of plunger that I can go up and down. If I have a bunch of X's here, I don't know how well this shows up on the video, but I have a bunch of red X's here that represent my, my gas, and a bunch of purple X's down here that indicate my solid. If I decrease my volume, so I push down on my piston, then this is going to increase the pressure of the system. And when I increase the pressure, then this reaction is going to shift towards the side with fewer moles of gas. Now, in that case, it's going to be the solid. So I'm going to have more solid that forms. Which is kind of intuitive because it's going to be more tightly packed than that gas is. I'm still going to have some gas there in the system. So these guys are still going to kind of be messing around. But fewer, right? There's a shift in the composition here to where there's more solid because there's less space for those gas particles to move around. So when I decrease the volume, that increases the pressure. That increase in pressure is a stressor on the equilibrium here, and that's going to cause this change or this shift in the composition. And in this case, it's going to shift left towards the reactants because there are fewer numbers of moles of gas over there. One mole of gas over here, zero moles of gas over here. So really what we're talking about is um, what is the difference then going from one side to another? And if we're looking at a difference, we're looking at a change, we're talking about delta. So it's all about delta n, uh, n being the number of moles. So I take the number of moles of gas of my products and the number of moles of gas of my reactants. So these are kind of gaseous, gaseous. And the other ones don't really matter because the gases are the ones that are taking up the space. The gases are the ones that are going to be influenced by pressure a lot more than a liquid or an aqueous solution or a solid would be. So let's take this reaction then. If I have carbon dioxide and react it with carbon, solid carbon, then I form carbon monoxide. So what happens when I increase the pressure? Well, I need to look at how this changes going from reactants to products. So if I look at delta N, I have two moles of gas on my product side here and one mole of gas on my reactant side, right? This doesn't count because it's solid, so it's not going to be influenced by the 
by the pressure change, it's just going to be there. So my delta N for this is going to be 2 minus 1, which gives me 1. So because of that, it's going to shift towards the direction with fewer moles of gas. If I increase the pressure, it's going to shift to the left. And that's always going to be true if your delta N is a positive number. So if delta N is uh, greater than zero, right, if it's a positive number, then it's going to shift towards the reactants. Because if it's positive, then that means that you have more moles of gas on your product side. Let's look at the Haber-Bosch process here. If we have nitrogen and hydrogen and we're getting ammonia, now we are looking and comparing. I have two moles again on my product side, but in this one it's homogeneous, so I have a whole bunch of gases over here. I have three moles of my hydrogen, one mole of my nitrogen, so I have four mo moles total. So my delta N is going to be 2 minus 4, which gives me negative 2. So I have fewer number of moles on my product side, so because of that, my reaction is going to shift towards the products, right? The fewer number of moles, when I decrease the volume, that increases the pressure, it's going to shift to the side with fewer moles. So uh, shifts right in this case. And so if delta N then, if that change in the number of moles of gas is less than zero, so if it's a negative number, then it's going to shift towards the products. And that's because when you take the difference, right, you have a smaller number that's subtracting a bigger number, so you get a negative number. So that means you're going to shift towards the product. So kind of however you want to think about that. I think it's easier to think about conceptually. How many moles do I have on each side? It's going to move towards the one with fewer. If you can use the delta N then as a guide. If it's positive, then it's going to shift towards the reactants. If it's negative, it's going to shift towards the products. Okay. So, because of the direct relationship then that we see in things like Dalton's law of partial pressures, there's this direct relationship between the number of moles and their partial pressures. So we can also talk about the equilibrium constant with respect to pressure. So that's that K sub P. And it has the same form. So if I have the Haber-Bosch process again, if I was thinking about this in terms of concentrations, I would say, well, Kc is equal to the concentration of my ammonia, raised to the second power over the concentrations of my nitrogen times my concentration of hydrogen cubed. So products over reactants. If I'm talking about Kp, so with respect to their partial pressures, it's the same setup, it's just with their partial pressure. So the partial pressure with respect to ammonia squared with the partial pressure for nitrogen times the partial pressure for hydrogen. And again, that's kind of our notation there, that it's big P for pressure, and then the gas that it is the partial pressure of uh, is kind of a subscript there. So exact same setup, products over reactants. We're raising these things to the power of their coefficient in the balanced chemical equation. There's a relationship then between these two things. They're not exactly equal to each other because the concentrations and the partial pressures are not equal to each other, but they are proportional to each other. And there is a way to go from one to another. So here's the relationship. It, the, the equilibrium constant with respect to pressure here is equal to the equilibrium constant with respect to the concentration times R, which is our gas constant. Good old reliable R and then the absolute temperature, which means that we're in Kelvin. And the reason we need to be in Kelvin is because our R is going to be in Kelvin. And then this is delta N, which is our, just like we were talking about before, the change in the number of moles of gas. Now we know there's lots of different versions of the gas constant. We usually, this guy is usually with respect to atmospheres, so this is usually going to be that 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Unless told otherwise. If you're given partial pressures in other units, 
or if it asks for something specific, then you can use different versions of R. But in general, that's the way that it kind of shakes out, is usually we see that thing in atmospheres. So let's look at how this would play out then. If we're given a, an equilibrium constant with respect to concentration for a given reaction, and I'm given a temperature, then what is the Kp? So let's kind of list out what we know here. We know that T is 191 degrees Celsius, and we know that because we're talking about gases, we definitely need to convert it to Kelvin. So if we add our 273.15, and I'm going to round to the ones place here, then we get 464 Kelvin. Okay, and then we're given a Kc, K sub C of this, something smallish. And we need to find our delta N. So that's looking at the change in the number of moles. So on this side, we have two moles of gas. One of these, one of these. In this one, we have one mole of gas. So it's going to be products minus reactants, which gives me one. And then my R is going to be with respect to atmospheres. So then 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Now these K values, I usually leave unitless. So you'll see that in a lot of my videos that I keep K as unitless because it's, you know, either concentrations with very up raised to various powers. So sometimes you have something like a one over molarity squared. What does that even mean physically? So I sometimes will drop those units because it doesn't have a lot of physical meaning. We're really looking at a ratio there. Um, so take that for whatever it's worth. All right, let's plug this in then. Here's our equation again. Kp is equal to Kc times my Rt raised to the delta n. So note here that the Rt is what I'm raising to the power of the delta n. So I'm solving for Kp. I'm given my my k sub c and then here's my r two one liter atmospheres per mole kelvin times my temperature absolute temperature and we're raising it to the delta n which in this case is positive one and again this could be a negative number we can have negative changes in the number of moles so sometimes you will see that in these and then when I plug that in, I end up with a Kp that is equal to 1.24. Okay, so that kind of gives you information about the equilibrium with respect to pressure. You can see, again, not the same number, but we have the same setup for finding the expressions for them. And we can convert from one to another so long as we're given the conditions of the reaction, so the temperature, and so long as we know the information about the reaction itself, we have a balanced chemical equation to work with so that we can get our delta N. All right, so that's a little bit about equilibrium and gases. If you have any questions on this, don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, I'll talk to you again soon.